Hello there, my name is Neil Cooper, a former shepherd of a couple of large flocks of 1300 and a smaller flock of 700 uh, that I looked after. Different places in the south, um, originally come from uh, Gilbert Estate, shepherding there on the south coast of England. Uh, today I want to talk about um, uh, lambing and you know different uh, presentations that the lambs come in and also you know assistance, lambing assistance, helping them uh, out when they need that help. So uh, now the normal way for a lamb to be born is head and front legs first, hooves pointing up. So if you lamb a few, if you're not experienced, that are presented right, then straight away when you go in and have a feel around, if you think a ewe needs assistance, that you recognise that it's not right because you've got the experience of knowing those that are right. So as I say, head, head first and feet pointing upwards. So uh, that's the normal presentation. Now in that presentation, you could get two legs come forward and that's all you can see, the two legs maybe, or, or find the two legs when you go in there to give assistance. No head, because the head's gone back either side, right back. And you know, in that case, you you quite have a, often have to push them back a little bit, push the legs back in a little bit and the neck back in a little bit into the womb. Now, this is what I've stressed, where a, a one of these veterinary gloves, long ones, so you don't take infection in there, or thoroughly wash your hands before you, you lamb that with antiseptic soap to stop taking infection in there. Now, you need your nails cut when you're lambing, a man or woman, you don't want long nails in there scratching about in the womb, because open wounds, wound from a nail scratch can cause a major infection. So, and you know, cleaned finger, fingernails as well, that they're not too dirty and everything, uh, you know, because you want to keep it as sterile as possible. So with that neck back, you can go in there and, and, find that head and, and you know, quite difficult, you know, it depends how old the ewe is, if she's got more room or, or a younger ewe with less room inside, you know, a first time lamma, and draw that head forward so it's in the right position. Quite often it's because there's maybe a restricted H bone, the pelvic bone inside, which is about, well, it depends on the ewe, but it's, you know, about six inches in. There's the H bone from the hips around uh, the opening of where the cervix opens. Uh, you go in there and you bring that head forward. Now uh, you sh can maybe draw the legs forward a bit and then the head, get hold of the head around here. Some people say grab them in the eye sockets, but I never done that. You know, you can grab them in the eyeballs balls and pull them forward. Uh, I didn't personally do that myself. I used to just grab the head slightly behind and ease it through the pelvic bone, pulling the legs a bit, the head a bit, until it comes naturally. If you've got one with a head back that you can't get to come through, it keeps going back all the time, you need one of these things, which is a V-shaped tube with a wire going through it, and you put the wire over the back of the ears, the V up the neck, tighten it up, you hold the legs with your hand and pull the head through at the same time. So that's a very useful thing to have. Uh, the other thing is a leg back, you know, one leg or two legs back and just the head. Now, sometimes they'll be push, 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 and they push the head out, pass the vulva, and if you're not there straight away, that head will suddenly balloon up and swell up with blood. And, you know, that it's quite a job to push back in. So you need some lubricant around the head, around the back of the head on the lamb and that. And, you know, really have to, uh, it, don't push when she's contracting because you're wasting your time, but really push hard and pop that head back in. Uh, you know, when she's not pushing, when she's not contracting, if she's contracting, just hold it where it is. And you can get them back in usually after a while and push it right back into the womb, bring both the legs up. Now, the old shepherd I used to be with said, always cup their hand with your, uh, their, their, their hooves with your hand, even though they are quite soft, to draw them up so you don't scratch the womb again. Now that's personal choice, you know, sometimes you can't always do that. But then draw both legs up, get it presented right, just gently ease it up so it's in the presented place, about to come through the pelvic H bone, and she'll give a push and pop, <laughs> it comes through. So work with her as well that she's pushing when you want her to be, basically, and you're stopping and stopping and holding that lamb when you want to keep it back. So it's one or, or both legs back. So uh, those with one leg back, if you've got a you that's had a lamb before, quite often they've got enough room. And uh, you can, you know, try pulling the one leg and gently on the neck and head, don't pull the neck and head too hard because you can pull it out of joint and break its neck. So, you know, uh, you can draw them and they might 
be enough of your little extra bit of uh, force to pull up that, that stuck leg that's stuck on the H bone and that's where it's stuck behind the H bone pull that leg so that it pops through now if it doesn't work go down the side of that lamb now you, you know with a, a younger you you're going to have to push all that back in if she's quite tight and get that other leg up you know but with a, a, a wide enough you you can pop your hand down the side of the missing leg and just get it behind the shoulder blade so it's back you get it behind the shoulder blade with your fingers dig your fingers in there and just pull the leg and pull that stuck shoulder through the H bone just by digging your fingers in behind there and, and pulling at the same time, you can pop it through, lamb it with one leg and the head. Now that's great. <laughs> so that's the sort of forward presented problems, or you can have leg, legs missing and head and she's pushing like mad and you go in there and you know, that you've got a you that's got a, a lamb that's got its legs back and its head back as well. So that's more of a mess to sort out, but you push it back enough to be able to get that head forward, get the legs up first usually, get the legs up first, then bring the head round. Again, you can use this holder to put the wire around the neck if you need to, and you know, draw it out normal lambing again. That's that, you know, that's more or less the, the forward presented ones, the different things they can have. But sometimes you're yanking on two legs and a head and it just won't come because you've got two legs from two different lambs. So so if you're having a problem at all, it's not coming very well, go and check down the side of one leg, make sure it's to that lambs. Check down the other side, make sure it's that lambs. Because it might just have one leg back, you see. Or even two legs belonging to another lamb and that another lamb's head. So two coming at once is the other thing to watch out for. Now, uh, one of the uh, more difficult ones is breach. Now, if you see breach, the, the hat there legs are upside down and their hooves are pointing downward when you see them so you can just see two legs with upside down pointing down hooves pointing downwards with a breech uh, or you just see a tail <laughs> quite often or she'd be straining and nothing happens you can't see nothing at all but you see their tail <laughs> well outside of the vagina yeah the vulva so you know you've got to go there now if it's got a tail uh, there uh, some shepherds want to push them back in whichever they are, and turn them around in the womb. Very rarely I did that. It's quite a job doing it quite often. Uh, um, you know, so you, you push them back in if they've got both legs quite a way back in and you gently cup the, the back legs and bring one up at a time uh, so that they're presented breech uh, with both legs out. And then, or you, you can turn them if you want to try that. Or, you know, I say, if they're already there with both back legs out, you've got to be careful when you lamb a breech because the, the, the rib cage naturally is like that. It's not straight. It's like this, you know, that gets wider as it goes down their body uh, when they're coming forward. And as it comes forward, it squeezes it in and it squeezes all the fluid out of that lamb so that when it comes out, its first breath is a healthy and good one. With a breech, it's the opposite way around. Instead of it, the, the rib cage being pushed in, it's being pushed even further out. So uh, when you lamb a breech, don't pull it downwards when you're lambing it. Pull it straight out of her, straight out of her to begin with. And very gently, and you know, ease it one leg at a time. So you're easing that rib cage because the rib cage is going against those H bones and pushing, and they can crack. Bang, 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 bang. You can have a lamb with several broken ribs quite easily through that. And you've got to be very careful with them. And you know, gently, gently. Now, by the time you get about halfway up the lamb's loin, the cord can break, the umbilical cord, and he might start breathing inside. And you know. But you have got to take it carefully anyway until you've got more or less all of the line out and the beginning of the rib cage, nearly to the beginning of the uh, vulva, uh, that you've got to go fairly steady and pull straight. And, you know, gently pull that, wriggling it one side at a time, both together, one side at a time, so that, and I mean, it's a humongous lamb You might and a very tight you. You might be far better off trying to push it in and turn it. Uh, but... Uh, you know, got to go careful with not breaking ribs. So go easy with pulling them out. Let the ewe strain and naturally push as well to help. And, you know, avoid breaking those ribs. Now, uh, once you get them past where their ribs are through the H bone, they're safe to pull out fairly quickly. And, you know, then you start pulling downwards 
fairly, you know, not completely downwards, but, you know, at more of an angle downwards. And you, you pull them out as quickly as possible after that to, because that's the period within a few seconds of that they're going to start breathing inside and sucking even more fluid into the lungs, which hasn't been expelled anyway, quite a bit of it. So you pull them as quickly as you can once you've got enough of them out past the, the ribs, past the H bones and pull them out and instantaneously hold them by the back legs and give them a big swing because they have not ejected that fluid out of their lungs and they will go <gasps> like that and they're just breathing that fluid even further down onto their lungs and they quite often die you know and they won't start breathing in the first place quite often because they've got so much fluid in their lungs so as a policy breaches you know as soon as you land them swing them about for about 30 seconds throwing and i mean enough to really thrash that fluid out of their lungs make sure you don't hit the heads on the floor you know to, to throw it out and then throw them down on the ground and give them a good hard rub with your hand or some straw whatever you do and you know they usually go <clears throat> you know and their first breath is actually air rather than fluid so you know that's great to do that um you know it's a good policy to do that now, any lamb that has a really rough lambing, uh, you know, you, you know, or has had a swollen head or a really hard traumatic lambing, very tight, very big lamb, for instance, very small lamb, uh, premature, whatever, then you need to, to breastfeed, uh, you need to uh, stomach feed them or bottle feed them to get some colostrum into them. And if it's really thick, just dilute it down a bit with a bit of milk powder, you know, lamb milk powder mix. And, you know, give them a feed because that colostrum's needed because they're weak and that they get uh, and don't go up and feed straight away. You find that they will get hypothermia very easily. And, you know, a thermometer is a good thing, but you can also put your finger in their mouth if they're not looking too healthy and see if they feel a bit cold. But you give them that first injection of, of you know, not injection, but stomach feed or bottle feed and they're off and thrifty and, you know, okay. So they need energy to, to recover from what they've been through. So, you know, anything that's had a traumatic lambing, tr I always, without fail, fed triplets some of the used colostrum straight away. I mean, I didn't have much time. A 1300 used lambing. I had to stomach feed them all and, you know, but it was quick and easy and they were done. And then you go back there out late and they're up and about and thrifty and, and, you know, they'd had that colostrum finding the tea to right and, you know, they were great. So it was just a policy for me to do that because, you know, if you didn't, now and again, you'd go and find one with hypothermia and it was hard to cure. Having a hot box to put them in, don't leave them in there for too long. Put them under, once they've recovered from hypothermia in a hot box, take them out and put them under infrared lamp because that's far better for them. And they get overheated in hot boxes and you can kill them by overheating them in them. You know, so, you know, you've got to be careful and, you know, hypothermic lamps that are totally not responding, put them in the hot box for about 30 minutes, 20 minutes before you give them stomach feedings, you know, because their whole body shut down more or less. Now you can get these special tonics that you can buy where colostrum and milk takes a time for a lamb's stomach to break down. You can get these special tonics for hypothermic lambs and such like that have got uh, great ingredients in them and it breaks down and goes into their system you know almost instantly to give them a bit of energy and stuff they're quite expensive unfortunately but it's worth maybe having a little bit of it for the odd lamb so that's some of the lambing problems you get i mean uh obviously fostering when you've got a single you know when you've got triplets about and you want to foster one off that's a good opportunity when you're lambing to do that if you know you've got a single or if that you've lambed her and you feel underneath she knows it's only a single she'll go get me a lamb to somebody you can get these things to stop you getting up that are, are like a, a restraint and goes around their neck and holds their hooves you can carry one of those with you so that she doesn't get up and you can go and get the lamb yourself so different things to to help you out and really rub the uh other lamb onto it and get any fluid you can out of her onto the foster lamb and put some some of her afterbirth membrane on the lamb so she's got to clean it off and then let her get up and start cleaning her quite often she'll take it you know but if you can break their waters over it when she's actually lambing then 99% of the time they'll take them anyway anyway um you know that's some of the things now uh also when you've lambed your you you know don't leave her in the big pen too long other ewes that are near lambing will try stealing her lambs and it'll get confusing you know or there's two or three ewes lambed in the same pen more confusion because they're all pinching each other's lambs so you know watch out for these things take her out you know as soon as possible and i used to have them out of that big pen within 15 minutes at the longest usually if i lamb them straight away so uh take them to her individual pen and you need about one individual pen 
10 per 10 ewes lambing, uh, you know, in the flock, total one per 10, uh, and always disinfect them, always keep them clean and new, freshly bedded for each new ewe. Always disinfect them after every ewe's been in there to stop disease build up like watery mouth and such like, which is terrible. You, they hardly ever recover from it. And, you know, put them in there. As you put your ewe in there, just check everything's all right, you know, with her. Check everything's all right with the lambs. Iodine, iodine in a bottle with a sort of rounded top more straight on the navel. Give it a good slug on the navel, you know, obviously not pulling it away from the body. Otherwise, it all spills out. But you slide the navel into a bottle and give it a good, you know, dowsing with some iodine and you know both lambs on their navels and they're you know then they're not going to pick up disease so very important to dip their navels in uh you know something like iodine and then uh just check the ewe because you know their their seals on their teats are quite often quite thick and you know lamb sucking on it can suck on it for two or three days and get nothing out there even though there's milk there so you test the ewe to make sure she's got milk on both sides and that you unblock that teat as well with any you know uh, wax seal they have on it so that it's free for the lambs to suckle on and get their food so you you know that's a good check to always do uh, that's more or less it for for lambing i'm going to go next weekend into some of the diseases and problems and different things you might come across uh like uh you know uh milk fever with use you know and how to treat it hypercalcemia like if they suddenly go down because they're milking so much or letting so much milk down after lambing you need to treat them have a high temperature and you know hypercalcemia 50 to 100 mil of of calcium that you know cow that they use for cows as well you can get in these 500 mil bottles uh injected uh under the skin behind the front shoulder sorts them out so anyway we're going to that next week Thanks for watching, Neil.